According to ESPN, by the time Josh Donaldson finished elementary school, every adult male on his dad's side of the family was either dead or in jail, including his father, who Josh witnessed commit a string of violent crimes so intense it ended up with him being sentenced to over a decade in prison. Josh Donaldson was just five years old, and his dark upbringing may be the reason why he's become one of the angriest, most intense players in baseball. He's also become one of the best players in baseball, revolutionized the sport through hitting mechanics, and in four years went from seriously considering quitting baseball to winning the AL MVP award. Unfortunately for Josh, this intensity does not come without critics that have caused altercations that stem all the way back to Little League, when an entire group of parents on the opposing team demanded he'd be taken off the mound. In high school, an entire basketball team tried to jump him after a game, and since getting to the big leagues, he's had numerous altercations with opposing teams, opposing teams' coaches, his own coaches, Billy Bean, yes, Billy Bean, the guy from Moneyball, and his general manager, which according to some may have resulted in Donaldson being traded, and especially umpires, including one incident which may go down as the best ejection of all time. And the history between Donaldson and this umpire, as well as the incidents that led up to this ejection, may surprise you. Josh Donaldson overcame an extremely grim childhood to become a professional baseball player, where at one point he was seen as an underperforming lifelong minor leaguer, only to become one of the best players in baseball. And he did it in the angriest way possible. Baseball doesn't exist. What is up, guys? My name is Alex with auctionofchampions.com. We are the best online sports memorabilia auction house out there. If you buy and sell, if you collect, if you're looking for gifts of autographed memorabilia from your favorite players, sports cards, rookie cards, graded cards, autograph cards, anything like that, check out auctionofchampions.com. There is new items every single day, no reserves on the items. Whatever it sells for, it sells for. Let's take a dive in, see what we have up for bid, uh, some of the examples of items that you can find on our site. Let's head over to the baseball category, and you see guys like Mickey Mantle, the Mick, 1958 tops, PSA graded card. You got a photo signed by Derek Jeter and Peyton Manning. We don't do just baseball, football, basketball, hockey, celebrity stuff, whatever it is, autographs and sports cards of anything and everything, any player you're looking for, Willie Mickey and the Duke right there. We got Ken Griffey Jr., Roger Maris. If you're looking for sports cards, wax boxes, hobby boxes, if you like open up packs, we have that here also. Um, the Captain Derek Jr., Ronald Acuna Jr. You see a photo behind me earlier. Clayton Kershaw, uh, Mariano Rivera, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., PSA graded 10 rookie card. That is the type of stuff that you could find at auctionofchampions.com. There's new items every single week. We do giveaways all the time. We have the best customer service in the industry, and we take pride in having the fastest shipping out of anybody in the sports memorabilia industry. So check out auctionofchampions.com, guys. There's something for everyone, any player. Check it out and bid like a champion. According to an article on ESPN, before every single game, Josh Donaldson sits alone, closes his eyes, and performs the same meditative practice. He controls his breathing and visualizes the opposing pitcher. No matter who the pitcher is, Donaldson comes up with reasons why he hates him. He decides he doesn't like the way he walks, convinces himself the pitcher thinks he's better than him, and thinks about how that pitcher is trying to take food from his kid's mouth. Josh Donaldson does this until he is overwhelmed in anger and energy. He then gets up, finds his teammates who seem unfocused, punches them in their stomach, pulls on their jersey, and even yells in their faces. This type of intensity has helped Josh Donaldson become one of the best players in baseball, but this intensity has also resulted in angry parents, angry opponents, and angry teammates that have led to verbal and even violent altercations that date all the way back 
to Little League. Josh Donaldson was born in Pensacola, Florida, and not in the best environment. His mother worked at a grocery store making less than $7 an hour, and his father was an iron worker with an extremely dark past. He sold drugs on the side and was apparently covered in tattoos and went by the nickname Bones. The two eventually split and a restraining order was issued, but a year later, Josh's dad broke that restraining order, assaulted his mother, and was sentenced to two years of probation. Shortly after, another incident incident occurred when Donaldson's dad broke into the family home. More violence happened and left Josh's mother with a broken jaw. After being driven to his father's home an hour away, Josh and his mother were forced to escape, flagging down a motorist in order to get to safety. Donaldson's father soon after was sentenced to 12 and a half years of prison for these crimes. Donaldson was just five years old when he witnessed these incidents. It may have contributed to the confrontations and intensity he is known for today. Donaldson was left to be raised solely by his mother, but he did have an uncle who treated him like one of his sons. He was the first one to notice Josh's baseball talent after watching him smoke ball after ball in his backyard one day and immediately told Josh's mother to put him into baseball. His uncle was also known for his harsh disciplinary tactics. Every time he acted up, he would put Josh in a 10 foot deep, 35 foot wide ditch that was in his backyard and watched Josh try to run his way out of the ditch. This could go on for up to 30 minutes. Sadly, Josh's uncle would pass away at the age of 36, and by the time he finished elementary school, every male on his father's side of the family was either dead or in jail, which statistically makes Donaldson very likely to go down the same path. But Donaldson did not. He was able to channel this anger into sports, but it did come with its fair share of controversy, even as a youth, and his mother defended her son every step of the way. In a Little League game, Josh was on the mound and unintentionally hit three batters in a row. Josh was obviously rattled and probably throwing harder than any 10 year old should, so the opposing team's parents literally started booing and calling for Josh to be taken out of the game. His mother witnessed this and started yelling to Josh from the stand saying, you are not coming out of this game, stand up there and finish it. So the coach left him in. He then hit the next two batters and then was taken out. One time at a game, Josh's mother overheard a parent say that she couldn't stand Josh Donaldson because he was too much of a showboat. Donaldson's mother got up out of her seat, cursed her out, and said to never speak about her son again. A parent in high school once came up to Donaldson's mother and told her to her face that Josh would never be able to play Division I baseball and that his career was going to be over soon. Even his own teammates had issues with his antics. One game, Josh's mother was behind home plate watching the game and overheard his teammates badmouthing him in the dugout. She marched in front of the dugout and started lecturing them. It is obvious that Josh and his mother had been through a lot and had a very strong connection and this was put on in full display in 2019 when Donaldson bought his mom a brand new Maserati as a reward for quitting smoking. <laughs> which was very well deserved because according to Josh, he went from being quote unquote the big man on campus in middle school to being vilified by his classmates in high school, which resulted in the incidents that I just mentioned. And these incidents were so upsetting to Josh's mother, she decided that she had no choice but to enroll him in Faith Academy in Mobile, Alabama, a school very well known for its sports programs. Before moving to Alabama, Josh would wake up at 5 a.m. and drive an hour and a half just to get to school. But some of the trouble and altercations Josh was trying to avoid seemed to follow him at his new school. On one occasion, after a basketball game against his school's rival, Josh found himself surrounded by 10 of the opposing team's players. He was ready to fight them all at once until his baseball coach, Lloyd Skoda, came to break it up. Skoda and Josh became very close during his time at Faith Academy. Skoda later described Josh as quote unquote, a great guy who doesn't want anyone to know because it will ruin his image. Image. Josh at the time did try to tone down his antics on the field, but noticed when he did, his play suffered and discovered that the intensity that he played with that upset so many others actually helped him succeed and ended up earning him a full scholarship to play baseball at the University of Auburn, where in 2007 as a junior, he became a preseason All-American and batted 349. After his junior year, he was drafted 48th overall by the Chicago Cubs as a catcher. 
but after just two minor league seasons, the Cubs seemingly gave up all hope that Donaldson would ever be able to make an impact at the major league level and traded him to the Oakland Athletics. And to be honest, nobody really thought much of it at the time. Traded to Oakland. What was that like? Well, on the headline, on the bottom line, it said John Donaldson. <laughs> Although he never finished a full minor league season with an OPS above 800, in 2010, he was called up to the major leagues as a catcher, where he ended up striking out 35% of the time. In 2012, he spent most of his time in the minor splitting time between positions, which usually isn't a great sign that the organization values you as an everyday player. Donaldson was 26 and thought his career was probably over. He even told his mother he was considering quitting, but she she told him, quote unquote, I did not raise a quitter. Do you want to be pumping gas? That's what you'll be doing if you give up now. So with very little options or backup plan, Donaldson continued the minor league grind, but knew if he wanted to succeed, he'd have to start hitting. So Donaldson began making swing adjustments that literally may have changed the entire game of baseball forever. He began researching exit velocity, analyzing launch angle, and threw any conventional hitting wisdom out the window. Our hitting coach, he comes up to me and he's like, JD, um, what are we gonna work on? And I said, you and me aren't working on anything. Donaldson's swing went from looking like this to looking like this. His only goal became hitting a ball as hard as he could, as far as he could, and created one of the most violent swings in baseball. And if you're a person that hates the new hitting philosophy in MLB that creates more home runs, less ground balls, and more strikeouts, you can basically blame Josh Donaldson for that. If you're 10 years old and your coach says, get on top of the ball, tell him no. <laughs> By the end of 2012, Donaldson had gone up and down from the majors to the minors five times. On one occasion, after struggling in the majors for most of the 2012 season, he was sent down once again. As he was leaving the ballpark, he turned on a local radio station and heard them trashing him on his poor and disappointing performance. Donaldson got upset and immediately called into the station saying he would figure it out and guaranteed them that the next time they saw him in the big leagues, he would prove them all wrong. That was the last time Josh Donaldson ever got demoted. He was called up again in August to replace an injured Brandon Inch. He hit 290 with a slugging percentage of 489, helping the Athletics win the division. The next year at spring training, he was promoted to a everyday third baseman and to everybody's surprise, came out of absolutely nowhere and finished fourth in MVP voting. He had become one of the best players in the league and even though he was new to the big leagues, he was not afraid to get into altercations with opposing players and eventually even his own general manager the famous Billy Bean. In his second full Major League season, he made his first All-Star team at 28 years old and even won a Fielding Bible Award. Josh Johnson had more defensive runs saved than any other third baseman in baseball, despite playing catcher for pretty much his entire career. During these two seasons in Oakland, Donaldson showed that he was an everyday Major League player who had the potential to be one of the best players in the league. He also showed he wasn't going to take anybody's sh in a game against the Twins in 2014, in extra innings, Josh Donaldson hit a foul ball about 700 feet. Glenn Perkins may have not liked the way Josh Donaldson admired this foul ball, so when he struck him out a pitch later, he let Josh Donaldson know about it. Donaldson usually doesn't like when people do that, so a skirmish went down. Later in the year against the Orioles, Donaldson tagged Manny Machado. Machado thought Donaldson tagged him a little too hard, apparently, and got in Donaldson's face. Donaldson seemed more confused than anything, but also wasn't going to back down from somebody trying to intimidate him. Manny Machado would retaliate by literally throwing his bat at the third baseman on purpose, but confusingly enough, Donaldson wasn't even playing third base that day. And perhaps Donaldson's best, yet most unappreciated quote-unquote beat happened between him and his general manager Billy Bean, who you may know from the movie Moneyball. Billy Bean is known for being one of the smartest GMs in baseball history who changed the game forever. He is also known for being extremely cheap, which was not ideal for Donaldson who after two breakout seasons wanted to get paid, and apparently wasn't shy in letting his general manager know that he deserved more money. In a tweet sent out while he was still signed to the Athletics, Donaldson disproved the notion that the organization didn't have enough money to pay big name players by saying they have plenty of money, they just tell everybody they don't. In one incident, Donaldson reportedly asked the manager for a day off to rest. 
Billy Bean didn't want his third baseman to take a day off, so he told the A's manager to put him back in the lineup. What followed was an altercation between Donaldson and Billy Bean, which ended in Donaldson repeatedly referring to his general manager as Billy Boy. At the end of the season, despite being the team's best player and being under contract for another four seasons, Billy Bean traded Donaldson to Toronto. This deal was extremely surprising to many people, including the Blue Jays, who said that when they pursued Donaldson, they'd assume he'd be off limits for a trade. But the source that broke the Billy Boy story went on to say that the two were quote unquote at war by the end of Donaldson's time in Oakland, and was not surprised when Billy Bean traded Donaldson because quote unquote, nobody talks to Billy that way. Although it is true that Billy Bean probably did not like the way Donaldson was so open about criticizing the team's lack of spending and wasn't used to his players calling him something as belittling as Billy Boy, this move is pretty much on par with the Athletics organization who is known for trading their best players after a few great seasons, before having to sign them to big contracts. And Donaldson himself doesn't seem to actually have any real personal issues with Billy Bean and has even publicly said that he will always be indebted to him for life for giving him the opportunity at the big league level. However, Billy Boy would later regret this trade because when Donaldson got to Toronto, he became one of the best players in baseball. In 2015, Donaldson did not only improve from his two breakout seasons, he led the league in hits, RBIs, total bases, had an OPS of 939, won the Silver Slugger, and the AL MVP award. He also led the Blue Jays to their first playoff appearance in over 20 years. Josh Donaldson was perfect for the Blue Jays. This team was known for their on-field altercations and brawls, which Donaldson was usually in the middle of. And in Toronto, a fan base that was probably more used to watching hockey than baseball, they saw Donaldson's rough, bruiser-like attitude and adopted him as their hero. Donaldson put his intensity on full display within two months of being in Toronto when Angels coach Mike Butcher said something to Josh he didn't like, and he responded by telling him to do this. Hmm. Butcher later said, quote unquote, it was a classless gesture. Guess that's just part of who he is. Donaldson said he just got caught up in the moment. And this is not the only time Donaldson had an altercation with the coach. In 2016, after striking out, he threw his bat in the dugout. His manager told him not to do that. Donaldson got upset and the two had to be separated. But according to Donaldson, this is what really happened. I just come back to the dugout and hit my bat against the thing. And you know, Gibby asked me what kind of cologne I was wearing. <laughs> And then I said, I said, it's this new clone called Tom Ford. I just got it. I was like, really? Oh, so he kind of got pretty close to me and I guess got a good whiff of it. And I was like, hey, man, back up. <laughs> so uh, I was like, I'll give you some after the game. In August 2015, Donaldson got hit by the very first pitch he saw. As he walked to first base, him and Edison Volquez exchanged words, so the umpire warned both benches. In Donaldson's next at bat, a pitch was thrown near his head. More words were exchanged. Later in the game, Troy Tulowitzki was hit by a pitch. Donaldson and John Gibbons were upset because despite a warning being issued and two batters being hit, no one was ejected. Then Donaldson came up to the plate and another ball came within inches of his head. Now Josh Donaldson was extremely upset. The next inning, Aaron Sanchez hit a batter, was ejected, and everyone was upset. In the 2015 ALDS, before the bat flip that started a riot, Donaldson was facing Kiana Kella in the bottom of the 13th inning and was upset after Kella tried to quick pitch him. He hit the ball 7,000 feet foul and told him the benches cleared and everyone was pretty mad. During his three full seasons in Toronto, Donaldson won an MVP, made two all-star teams, two silver sluggers, got MVP votes all three years, never finished a season with an OPS below 900. He was the best player on the franchise's best team in decades and earned himself a two-year $28 million contract. But in 2018, the Blue Jays saw their window of opportunity closing and traded Donaldson to the Indians. He arrived in Cleveland on the disabled list where he spent most of the season, and although when he did play he produced at the plate, he wasn't able to do much in the playoffs and entered the offseason as a free agent. Although he proved he was one of the most dangerous hitters in baseball, he was 33 years old and coming off an injury, so he settled for a one-year contract in Atlanta, and many people believed the Braves had still overpaid. But when Donaldson got to Atlanta, the full powers of the Bringer of Rain were released, a nickname Donaldson gave himself after watching Spartacus, a 
show on Stars about a gladiator that brought rain to Rome after cutting off the head of one of his rivals. In Atlanta, he had an OPS of 900, hit 37 home runs, and finished 11th in MVP voting. He proved a lot of naysayers wrong. He also proved he would continue to play with an intensity that caused confrontations with umpires, opponents, and even opposing fans. In a game against the Pirates, Joe Musgrove hit him with a fastball. Donaldson felt Musgrove staring him down. He looked towards first base, looked back at Musgrove, who was still staring at him, and asked, why are you looking at me? He shoved the catcher and the bench is cleared. Not much happened after that. Later in the year, in Washington, a fan got a little carried away and started screaming at Donaldson as loud as he could throughout his at-bat. Probably the guy that gives him the most trouble. Most players would probably ignore this heckler, but not the bringer of rain. He hit a bomb, rounded the bases, found the fan in the stands as he was coming into home plate, and told him to... In New York, a girl sitting behind the on-deck circle was probably talking a little trash to Donaldson, so he went up to her and asked her to touch his bat for good luck. She did touch his bat, but said it was for bad luck. Big mistake. Donaldson took this personally, hit a bomb, got fired up, and asked her for a high five. But she was too embarrassed to accept. However, Donaldson did get a bat signed and gifted it to her later on in the game. In 2019, Donaldson resurrected his career again. He earned himself the Comeback Player of the Year award and a four-year $92 million contract with the Minnesota Twins. And for a 34-year-old third baseman with a history of injuries, this is an extremely lucrative contract. Despite not being able to play much for the Twins due to a shortened season in 2020 and a calf injury, Donaldson has been productive when he's played, and his percentile rankings in 2021 so far show that he will probably have another extremely effective year. But during his short time with the Twins, he has already been able to produce one of the greatest ejections in MLB history. And what most people don't realize is that this ejection was a result of a string of incidents with this umpire that date back well before the ejection happened. And this should not come as a surprise because history shows Donaldson does not exactly get along with umpires. While with the Blue Jays, Donaldson Chuck swung at a pitch. The umpire said he went. Donaldson was pretty mad that he didn't at least ask the first base umpire for an appeal, and a few pitches later, the umpire made another questionable call, and Donaldson completely lost it. Against the Red Sox in the 18th inning, Donaldson had a few words with an umpire because of this call. He threw him out halfway through in at bat. Then Donaldson had a lot more words to say to this umpire. In one game against the Twins, Donaldson grounded out to shortstop and didn't really hustle. The Twins bench started chirping him, and as you can probably guess, Donaldson started chirping back. However, the umpire thought he was chirping at him and threw him out of the game, and Donaldson wasn't even complaining. And then we have Donaldson's most notorious ejection. Earlier in the at-bat, Donaldson check swung at a pitch. The umpire called it a strike. Donaldson then either asked the umpire if it was a strike because he swung, or if it was a called strike. And if it was a called strike, where was it in the zone? And according to Donaldson, he refused to give him an answer. So a few pitches later, after he hit a home run, Donaldson rounded the bases, and when he got to home, he disrespected the umpire any way he could. Donaldson did get some backlash for doing this by some who felt that he went way too far, but this is how he felt about the situation. you feel like you accomplished what you were trying to accomplish, crossing home plate? Or no, I think I pretty much summed it up. I think I nailed it, actually. He later said that he had a bigger problem with the umpire due to a past incident, but wouldn't say what until he knew what his punishment from the MLB would be. This postseason, while on a live stream with the Starting Nine podcast, Donaldson said the ejection had very little to do with balls and strikes, and more to do with the fact that the umpire had said disrespectful things about people on his team and even players on the other team. So when he saw him standing close to the plate when rounding the bases, he did this. We'll never know exactly what the umpire said to Donaldson to set him off, but this ejection will go down in history and will be talked about for years, so there is a good chance Donaldson will let the cat out of the bag eventually. Josh Donaldson has put his intensity and confrontational attitude on display ever since he was a child, where he experienced some things that nobody, especially kids at his age, should. He's been overlooked as a high school player, a minor league player, and even a major league player. 
This has given Donaldson a massive chip on his shoulder, which has made him the angriest player in baseball. And thanks to this anger and intensity, he's also become one of the best players in baseball. It's one moment, please. One moment. 